And good afternoon, everybody. Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me. Uh, my name is Paul Grogan, and I'm joined right now by Mr. David Turtsey. Hello, David. Hello. Hello. How are you hello. doing? Good, good. It's great to be here. It's now, we too, are broadcasting. Too warm outside anyways. Yeah, it's, it's very warm here as well. You're having the same heat wave as we are? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're broadcasting today on YouTube. Hello to everybody who is watching on YouTube. The chat for that is up on screen. Uh, I'm also broadcasting to the GridCon Facebook group. Uh, I can't see the chat on the GridCon Facebook group because I can't get the plugin working. Um, I will occasionally flip back to the YouTube uh, to the Facebook feed. If you're watching this live on Facebook, the best thing to do would be to pop over to YouTube and join in the comments there. But I will try and keep an eye on it here as well. So this video is part of a series of videos that I'm doing uh, to tie in with Virtual GridCon, which is running this weekend, which is a free to attend virtual convention that I'm hosting. I'm doing various streams over the weekend and a few live Q and A's. And David joining me today, and this was your idea actually, this is your fault. Uh, which part? The, 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 the... Well, you said, can I have a bit of your time and do an interview with you? And then I went, well, I can't just do it with David because the other people will feel left out. Uh, so I was doing three. And then I had Ryan Courtney ping me this morning and say, well, if you're going to be doing interviews with two-bit designers like David Turtsey, then you should be doing one with me as well. No, he didn't mention you. He said Vittel, actually. So, <laughs> so um, I've sneaked in an extra one with Ryan Courtney tonight. Well, uh, when, you, when you asked on Facebook on whom you should interview, I voted for everyone I know and like except myself. And then I even started a campaign to get Vladia interviewed. Yes. But you went Vladia lazy was... on us. Well, Vladi was going to be interviewed, but there was something happened and then he, he's not able to do it. Well, you, know what it's like, you know what it's like. Plus, you, so, you can't have too many Eastern Europeans on one con. Anyways. Well, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. So um, first question that I have for you, because you've pulled me up on this before, is how do you pronounce your name? Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, I, I, I messed with everybody on that. <laughs> so uh, like back back with, I, I have always trouble switching between my Hungarian accent and my pretending to speak proper English accent which okay. I obviously don't so uh, in in England I always say Turti no that was pretty good for either yes so just okay. try to say Turti when you when I spell it out phonetically then then tour C and there's no X in it no ch in it no z in it right just, it's a so it's, sound that, that the, I mean, we're just going to spend the next 45 minutes, David, yes. teaching me how to pronounce his name. So rather than T-U-R, it's more pronounced T-O-O-R. Uh, or T-O-U-R, but yes. Tootsie. Yeah, close enough. You'll never get it, but it's fine. <laughs> I'm, never I'm, I'm, it. I'm, I'm happy with the knowledge that the Dutch vowels are more complicated than the Hungarians. Therefore, the overlap is bigger. So okay. he, here, actually, more people can... Uh, pronounce my name then on the wrong side of Boris channel. Right. Excellent. So most of the people in the chat do know who you are and what you've done. But for the, for, the, for anybody who doesn't, just introduce yourself quickly. Well, uh, half of the people know me as the guy who did an acrony and the no. other half of the people know me as the guy who does the solo modes. Yes. Some, some people know me as both. At this point, I tend to have a very indignated but where I mentioned <laughs> stuff like Kitchen Rush, Days of Fire, yeah. Die Settlers, uh, and and since last year, Venice, although it hasn't yep. shipped yet, but a few more are coming. And 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 the, this is the year 2020 is the year I picked a very bad year to have a good year. Uh, this is this is the year when when all the projects I've been working on since I went full time are coming to fruition. So this year I had Excavation Earth, Defense of Procyon 3, Perseverance is launching, I want to say next week or the week after, I'm very seventh. bad at counting. Seventh, seventh. That's, yeah. so that's, that's a week and a half from now. And then Petricor is coming back for one more round. And then Tekenu and Tawantinsu are going straight to retail in August and October yeah. respectively. And I think that's all the ones I have going on right now, but I always forget a few games. Yeah. You say it's, it's, it's not a good year for you to have your biggest year. I've not seen the games industry in terms of sales be affected by the current situation. I don't know. All I see is I, I, I miss the lines of uh, fans uh, queuing yes. up to get signatures. Yeah, that, that, that is I miss true. all of you. <laughs> so which came first then, Anachrony or Solo Modes? Anachrony, definitely anachrony. Okay. We were 
we were investigating what stretch goals to do for an acronym, and I played uh, Viticulture, which was uh, uh, Morten's first solo mode, and while trailblazing it was, it didn't quite hold my interest, right. and I went, I can do this. Right. And then I made the solo mode, and I hated it, so I made it slightly better. Okay. And and I kept improving it until I didn't hate it anymore. Right. Uh, the, the, truth to be told, I'm not a solo gamer. Uh, if I have to talk to a piece of cardboard for 20 minutes straight, my attention wanders off, and mm -hmm. I just switch back to Facebook. And so, I when people ask me what's my favorite solo game, I just chuckle yeah. and walk away because <laughs> no, I don't ever play solo games. Most definitely not my yeah. own. Uh, it, it, it... It, it's, it's very similar because I can't learn how to play a game by watching a how to play video. Exactly. I can't do it. I can't exactly. do it. I, I just, I just, I know I'm, I'm a rule book person or, you know, learning actually playing the game. I can't actually learn how to play games by watching how to play videos. So there you go. So it turns out what happened was because I found all good solo modes boring, the stuff I added to the solo modes for me to not find them so boring was something nobody else have ever done. Right. And and all the and and when I first did it in Anachrony, I didn't even get it particularly right. Like, which is why Anachrony got a new solo mode this year because mm -hmm. we, we went back and, and with my testing group and and looked at it and went, if we did Anachrony today, it would get a B minus. Right. So we can do better than this and yes. and, and 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 i i created some new guidelines and my oh. one of my lead developers john albertson spent literally 120 games of anachrony perfecting the new system nice. so the new system will be the the top yeah so the chronosus is coming and it's gonna get you all yeah so uh i think probably next week I'm actually going to be doing an Anachrony solo playthrough on my channel, and we've discussed which solo mode I should use. Yes, yes. And there was three options. There was the one that's included in the base game right now, which is In like the Go. old base game. The, the new old base, base game, game doesn't include anyone anymore because we, we, we give you True. an app to play it with instead. Yeah, okay. So I'm not using that one. Okay. Then, then there's the middle one, which is the one I am using, which is... That's, that's the fixed version of the original, which doesn't do the fancy bits yet, but doesn't have the problems anymore. Okay. And then the and new, new one, is which the I'm not going to be doing. Which right. does all the fancy stuff and is about twice as complicated to run. But we are saying that the people who's going to use Chronosus will be not newbies to Anachrony and newbies to solo gaming. So they can handle realism over simplicity. Yeah, cool. So you've become known within the industry as, you know, a solo game expert. Yes. And, and if, you, if you're going to ask me why, it's obviously fame and fortune. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I saw an opening in the market that for some reason I was good at and yeah. I was like like it probably came from the fact that that when I we went full time I needed to find a reason for publishers to pay me right and I went well I can edit rule books I know I'm not the greatest but I'm all right but hey I mm -hmm. can design solo modes and you don't got anybody else for that yeah and <laughs> that's how I ended up designing the solo mode for Teotihuacan that was right basically my first self-run project i yeah. was one of the testers of, of of teo and i went hey can i rewrite the rule and make a solo mode for it yeah and they were like cool. why not so that's how that game came to be right i'm just going to look at the chat on youtube and because there have been a few questions coming in so i don't want to wait too long because they will disappear um so yeah lots of people saying hello um Da, 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 da. Uh, so any fun projects let's do the first one this is from rage badger gaming hi thanks for joining in so projects that you're working on right now now i know you've probably got 20 but just yes i do have 20 pick a few <laughs> um working on like the, the one that's making me suffer right now is a solo mode for a very well known and very famous two-player game that i'm not allowed to say for another two weeks uh, but but people have been asking me both publicly and directly to design a solo mode for this game and i was like way ahead of you people so but a two-player game very very well known two-player game and th no it's not touch color unfortunately no I high, I highly rated on bgg i don't know probably i i don't don't check set, it set, so. set, set around the cold war no no not oh. that highly rated <laughs> oh not that highly rated okay right no, uh, um, actively double guessing your opponents and tracking their internal information is one of the few things I don't think can be done well no. solo. So uh, 
Twilight Struggle needs an AI, not an automa. So right, okay. I would never try to design a solo for Twilight Struggle. Right. Um, so so that's 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 what's giving me the 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 back sweat right now. The the fun stuff is a video game adaptation where I don't know if I can say the title yet, so I'm not gonna say it. Okay. Um, and then another fun stuff is another video game adaptation for a different publisher that I'm definitely can't say the title of it yet. Okay. Can we talk offline about this because I think I know some stuff that I'm not allowed to talk about, and I just want to know from you if it's the same stuff. I think you know one of the two. We'll talk okay. about it. After. We'll talk about it offline later on. Um, and 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 uh, for on the on the you know what's the word for it the, the cleanup job um i'm uh, finishing the solo mode and the rule book for dark ages which was a board and life kickstarter earlier this year yeah. from uh the adam kubinski and on Noak, and it's a really fun game so hey who doesn't want a medieval 4x that's playable one well, to eight players yeah exactly <laughs> Um, so a question in from James. Uh, he got told off in a Kickstarter forum recently uh, as by, by David as he said he hoped the game's solo mode wouldn't just beat your own score and he said you'd never design something that bad. True, true, <laughs> true, true. Um, I would never design beat your own score. That said, since I made that statement, I have made solo modes where you win if you reach a certain point. Right. But that's because the game throws stuff at you that's hard to survive right and if you survive enough to reach that score you won okay and yes you can record your score and you can try to beat it next time mm -hmm. and no the automa doesn't keep its own score because that would be irrelevant i would just be assigning random numbers to it right instead instead i'm saying hit this point while surviving all the stuff i'm throwing at you yeah. and if you can you win and right. I don't consider that the beat your own score. A beat your own score is build something out of this and then write down how well you've done. Okay. That okay. I would never do. So let's talk about Mage Knight then. Okay. It's the greatest game of all time and anybody saying otherwise is clearly wrong. Yeah, well, we know that, but... Also, Mage my favorite Knight... is two-player cooperative on just below hardest difficulty. So is Mage Knight not a beat your own score game? I don't know. I never played solo. It's a corp survival game. Right. And you, you, you put winning as defeating the cities and not yeah. winning as not defeating the cities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never right. written down my score. Okay. And cool. I've never played it solo. Well, no, I've played it solo once and then, yeah, I think I've gone schizophrenic. I will never do this again. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I talked to myself, like I was having proper Smeagol Golem arguments with myself. So. Right. Let's never do that again. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 do, I do that on camera. I know Rado gets a lot of criticism for like, oh, should I do this? Should I do that? And then I started doing playthroughs and I'm like, oh, I'm doing exactly the same. Um, and I do uh, that without an audience. So imagine <laughs> how crazy I feel. <laughs> Are there any games out there that don't have solo modes that you would like to make a solo mode for? I set out to design a solo mode for Brass Birmingham, but then I found a very good unofficial solo mode for it and I went, I'm good. Okay. Um, what else? It's because I don't need solo mode, so it's yeah. it's it's mostly when when people highlight that hey, we love this game, why doesn't it have solo? Or a friend of mine publishes a game that doesn't have solo, and yeah, I go, do. what have you done? Right. <laughs> so, which is how I end up designing solo modes for it in the expansion and then sweating when I realize it's not as easy as I thought. Right, okay. <laughs> um, what other games designers would you like to work with that you aren't currently working with? Because two years ago we had this conversation and, and since, since then, then I'm, yes. you are now working with all of those people that we talked about. So not who's yet, left on your list? Because Vital and and uh, uh, and Martin Wallace keep dodging me on the account of uh, my calendar is busy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, but since then I've managed Daniel Tashini, I've managed Richard Breeze. Yeah. Uh, I've managed someone else. I'm forgetting character. I've, 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 I'm currently working with uh, Jared Gray of Endeavor. Okay. He's cool. not he's not as famous as he should be. No. Um, but but he's great. And uh, who do I want to work with? The top of that pile right now is probably Emerson Machutsuti. After okay. doing the solo mode for um, Foundations of Rome, and I went okay, so 
that game was was a proper this is how it should be done right. feeling for me and it's like I, I, and 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 now i properly caught up with all his other games and i'm like yes i i need this in my life cool uh on the on the realistic list of i have plans currently uh, simon luciani is, is sitting very near the top nice he's he uh, we've got an email conversation in my inbox about stuff right um no simon is cool i like him a lot yeah that so you mentioned ad adaptation yes. board game adaptations of video games yes for some reason people keep finding me with uh, no i know what happened last year i got hired to do the solo mode for europa universalis yeah i remember that and i went and flew to norway i've never met the guy before ivin the tallest person i've ever seen he's a lovely fella yeah and he set up this game it takes like two giant yeah you know that kind of <laughs> things he set up a four player game we played for seven hours this is monday <laughs> afternoon after coming in from the airport that was uh, half of a grand campaign so the game is split into four eras you can play one era as a game and mm -hmm. four eras as a grand campaign so we played two eras and after that i went okay I'm honestly positively surprised. This is much better than I feared. But if you want to make a good solo mode, you need other interactions in the game besides attacking the other player. Yeah. And this is where most designers would go, what do this guy know? He came in, he played the game once and he's already mouthing me right. off. I've invent, okay, what do you want to change? Right. Tuesday morning, I handed over to him a, a, a three-page list of I would want to try these things. Mm -hmm. By Thursday morning, that's how we were playing the game. Nice. And by Thursday evening, I designed the solo mode on the new right. system. Cool. Okay. So the question from the chat is, what video games do you play, if any? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I used to play a lot. Uh, I think it's it's more of a more of a depends on the girlfriend kind of experience. Right. Uh, because because uh, for, for for a few years it was very much you know sit in front of the Xbox and shoot Halo and okay. and, and 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 that worked and and then then came Mass Effect which is appears to the inner tracky and sci-fi nerd to me right. and then and then came the ending of Mass Effect three and swearing off video games forever right uh, <laughs> and then I I nose dived into uh, uh, board games and now my current partner is occasionally trying to lure me back into video gaming because she's she's quite hardcore at it but right i think i'm too far gone to be rescued okay, okay. uh right let's just scroll down from the chat um da, 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 da. I, I see alan is being wrong about me uh, yeah that's, alan is wrong about me no, yeah, that's, that's not just our opinion that's actually scientific it's, studies it's have shown fact. Yes. yeah it's abs absolutely fact. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm I'm insanely jealous uh, of the fact that I wasn't around at the right time when I could have designed an expansion for Mage Knight. So I will never forgive you for that. Well, you should, you should have sent a time traveling message to my future self about. I, that. I, I should have done. I should have done. Yes. Um, do you think it's possible to make TCGs into solo games? Don't know. Never played TCGs. Uh, okay, but you know the principle. I know the. Here is a challenge, assemble a deck, shuffle it, and then beat the challenge. Those are essentially solo games already. Right. And then the other kind of TCGs are here is my deck, here is your deck. Do a meta, meta, rock, paper, scissors over it, and then play out a quick strategy game. And yeah. those probably can't have meaningful solo games because you can't meta, meta, rock, paper, scissors a bot. Yeah. So, therefore, I never went, ooh, I wonder, it, because half of them is already solo and the other half needs the human yeah so yeah alan is asking can you do a solo mode for kingmaker i'll send you uh, the, the contract and and <laughs> <laughs> although at this point my next opening is in september so well uh, that's 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 yeah I'm, I'm surprised your opening is in september uh for a small solo mode i'm expecting to charge like one day for it right okay uh what is a theme this is a question from corey what is a theme you'd like to see in a future game or a theme which already exists in games but hasn't been used enough so themes that i haven't yet designed but are on my queue of take an idea from here when you have an empty half afternoon mm -hmm. involve um 
well, actually, that wasn't my team. Uh, my, my 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 theme. It was sent by the uh, the the. Should I should I say it or this is inside secret? Anyway, I've been I've been suggested to make a the 1984-esque themed game okay. co-designed with another famous person. We'll reveal it once the game is actually designed because there's no point in people hyping right. it. Um, I've been reading Wikipedia articles about Dutch history since I moved here, so now I want a game about uh, uh, pumping out the sea, uh, about tulip auctions, and right. about uh, uh, the, the, the painters and philosophers traveling from university to university. Because okay. it, it, it seems these are the three things the Dutch people did over the past thousand years that right. didn't involve war and exploitation of non-European people. Right. Okay. Um, any updates about the game that you're doing with Richard Breeze? Yes, it's almost almost completely complete, uh, but COVID and other yeah. real life issues push, pushed Richard's timetable yes. back. Yeah. Plus, oh, he needs to get yeah. <laughs> and he needs to get two more games out. One of which includes a solo mode by me. Yeah. But uh, but somewhere like lo lo before COVID, when we talked, it was going to be a 21 Essen game. Now it's a hopefully 21 Essen game. Yeah. Uh, has the name of that been announced yet? What, Keyside? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. I knew it was yes, Keyside, I just Keyside. didn't know if it had been announced. Uh, the, we've been calling it Keyfundland for a long yeah. while because it because it's an island off the mainland there where you farm little animals and that made a Newfoundland-shaped hole in my mind. But yeah. then uh, Richard fell in love with the pun of Keyside, which I explained to him that no non-British person will ever no. get. But <laughs> but he was so proud of himself for that pun that it stuck. Yeah, cool. Uh, another question from James, back to solo modes. Are, the, are there any solo modes in games that you wish you had been asked to design because you know you could have done them better? Don't like bad-mouthing people. No. Uh, okay. Plus, I don't play them enough to have an opinion. If John is still in the chat, I saw him earlier. Oh, the, he always tells me stuff like this, uh, like we could have done this better. So right. I, I think he he posted that he had to go back to work. But that's more of a John question than a me question. Right. Okay. Um, uh, what have we got now? Need more anime themed games? Says Jonathan from the Hexy Beast. Uh, okay. Again, I'm I'm I'm. Uh, wary of drawing my partner's ire here but i haven't even seen studio ghibli never mind other animes that i should have so yeah this is this is where i make a joke about i've never got into pokemon so okay uh, I, I i'm the same with that I, I i mean i've been surrounded by you know 10 20 years by people who were really into anime and all talk about it and i haven't got a clue what they're talking about if they're it's coming just... to uh, to to punish me for my digressions, I'll come and hide in your basement. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, <laughs> thoughts on Kingdom Death? I looked at it, it, they looked like nice little paperweights, and I moved on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, does David like cooperative games? Other than real, Mage Knight? Real, I like the very heavy ones, yeah. and the real-time ones. Okay. I think the two best co-ops other than the big, other than Mage Knight, is uh, Space Alert and Project Elite. See, I've never played Project Elite, but I would agree with you on Space Alert. Uh, the benefit of uh, Project Elite is that it works with two and three, whereas Space okay. Alert is a four and five player game. It is a four and five, so, yeah, absolutely. Yes. And, uh, and of course, uh, the only reason, because Kitchen Rush originally used to be a competitive game because I'm insane. Yeah. And after everybody told me that that's literally unpublishable, including yeah. one Mr. Schwatel. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and 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 then then Artipia came back saying we'll publish it, but only if we can turn it to co-op. Yeah. And the only reason I said yes was Project Elite. Right. Okay. Interesting how funny things work out like that. Uh, and because because you know escape made me fall both in and out of love with the genre and yeah. then when i was ready to give up on the genre then project Elite came out and showed me how it was done right so okay as for um... pandemic i played legacy season one mm -hmm. and the nicest thing i can say about it is that it made me play pandemic 12 times right okay only 12 maybe 13 and we didn't lose much okay, it, it think, was think... it was four it was four alpha gamers around the table and it pretty much went 
<laughs> I have a sequence of moves that has a at least 40% chance of survival by your turn. Does anyone have anything better? Yeah, I have a sequence of move that has a 60% of defeat, but if we don't lose by your turn, we win. Okay, let's take that. Yeah. So yeah. there was no personal ownership or anybody making their own decisions. It was basically a competition of alpha players and nobody right. was mad about it because we could all do the math. I'm just going to switch to the Facebook chat to see if anybody's left a comment. It doesn't look like we have any comments on the Facebook. So if you are watching this on Facebook, please let me know because if nobody is watching this on Facebook, I, I might just not bother and just, yeah, stick with it on YouTube. But uh, anyway, right, back to the YouTube comments. I uh, see a question about that. Perseverance. How has it changed since Spiel? Yes. I don't exactly remember what it did at Spiel. So the high level overview uh, at uh, Spiel, we were demoing episode one. So I'm just going to talk about episode one here. Yeah. Uh, the high level overview hasn't changed. It's still dice drafting, dice placement into the four districts. You still send out soldiers to fight the dinos. And if you let uh, the dinos in, then that eats somebody's house and you lose points for it. So, so that the high pitch didn't change. The exact way an assembly is scored and the exact way the rewards are awarded after a dino attack successful or unsuccessful defense have been simplified. The the way the patrol action and the soldiers proactively get you rewards have been both simplified and made more exciting. But it, it, it's it's been development, not redesign. Right. Now, next week for my birthday, I am doing a live Q&A about perseverance and I, I, are you in that i don't think so but right. it's because i mean every qa ever with everybody and uh since on perseverance we have at least five designers maybe six i don't remember what's the actual agreement on the crediting right. which means i think it's high time somebody else gets the yeah. limelight as well it's with victor and peter and i i just don't victor remember and Richard. sorry yes <laughs> victor, victor and peter. peter is one person yes uh victor <laughs> and richard um yes. It's with those two, and I, and I couldn't remember if you were going to be in that as well. They can not. handle it. They, 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 they managed to design a, a top-class game before I came around. They managed to design another very, very good game after I came around. And yeah. probably, interestingly enough, despite the fact that we've never sat down and never designed a game together from scratch, Victor is the person I've worked by far the most in the right. industry. It's like... Okay, let's have a four and a half hour brainstorming Skype call that happens about twice or three times a month with us. Right. Okay. At any given point, which is why now it's some fairly high on my priority list to sit down and design a game with him from scratch. Right. Because because right. because when we work together on Tricarian, essentially I was extending their uh, his ideas by designing yep. the expansion, and then he was just balancing my expansion. And when we worked on Anachronia, now on Perseverance, it's me coming up with the concept, he coming up with a better concept, and then me improving his better concept nice. and then repeat. Okay. So there is never any sitting down and let's design a game together, which is something I've done with uh, Daniel Tashini, for example. Yeah. I've never done that with Victor, and I've worked together with Victor for like four years, yeah. almost day and night. So it's, it's, it's time to catch up. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, I'm just looking at my work calendar. So this is July the 2nd. So that's Thursday, the day before my birthday. Um, somebody so yeah. sent you Jaffa Cakes. Somebody needs to send me Jaffa Cakes, definitely. 27 oh. of them, because that's how old I am this year. Um, so yeah, Perseverance live Q&A on the, on the Thursday night, the 2nd of July. And then the week after, on the Wednesday the 8th and Thursday the 9th, I'm doing two live playthroughs. I think we're doing episode one on the eighth, and I think we're doing episode two on the ninth. I think that, that's the that I know about. That I know about, and right. I know that ep episode one will be Thomas Wolf and myself playing with you. Okay, cool. And epi epi uh, Th Thomas and Wolf are the designers of Yido for anybody not right. connecting the uh, the dots, and which is complete coincidence that I also designed the solo mode for Yido. Right. Uh, and the uh, solo and cooperative mode, I'm super proud of it because right. Yido is, is smart and fun, but a bit too chaotic for me. But by turning it into a cooperative, that chaos turned into good stress. Right. So, so okay. I actually had a lot of fun playing Yido cooperatively, which is, I didn't play it solo. I played it cooperatively with them and that was all right. right. Uh, so, so yes, so we'll play episode one, you, me, Thomas and Wolf. And yeah. 
the day after the Victor and Richard will join you for episode two. Nice. Okay, cool. Thank you for letting me know that. Um, so other questions in the chat. Uh, this is from Jerome. Any chance of seeing uh, Takenu on Tabletop Simulator or Tabletopia soon? Those, uh, I know we have internal Tabletopia modules for them, but how and when and what form are they released? Those are marketing decisions I'm not privy to. Right, okay. Next question, what got you into board gaming? Battlestar Galactica. Because you're a newbie, aren't you? You're a complete <laughs> noob yes. to this hobby. <laughs> yes, I, I, the, I played my first non-Battlestar Galactica game in 2011, and that was uh, Discord and Moorpark. That was right. my second second proper board game. The first one was Battlestar Galactica, but I was quite happy to just play that for three years. Yeah. So yeah, relatively new to the hobby, considering how, how big a part you are of the hobby now. Uh, it's you know, because I'm design. shameless and relentless. Well, yeah, <laughs> there is that. Right. And, and, and the hair. So the question that I was going to ask before I go back to the chat is, you are now a full-time games designer. Yes, I have been since 2018 January. Wow. Time flies when you get older. Yes. So that's 18 months now. I don't know. I never counted that far. Yeah, well, it, it's, it's June 2020, so it's 18 Because, of course, we've known each other for a few years. So when I first met you, you still had a full-time job. Yes, what I was, was a software it? engineer in a uh, London city. Uh, at the time when you met me, probably I have just quit an investment bank and just started working in an insurance brokerage firm. Yeah. And my yeah. job was to create and the, create the front end of a JavaScript application and make sure that all the little chart dots rendered correctly and and try to create uh, uh, like patterns and dummy frameworks so that the less capable members of the team can just churn out boring pages after one another. Right. Well, well, thank you for answering my next question before I've even asked it which is, why would you want to give up that job to become a full-time board game designer? Because <laughs> you've described it and you sounded bored while you were describing it. To be frank, while I was doing it, and especially when I started doing it, I really loved it because it was a, hey, people are making a mess here and I can go in and then show them how it's done. That sounds fun, right? Yeah. And, and the deeper I got into it, and not just that particular job, but like, the web development in general, the deeper I got and the bigger messes I've seen, in, my initial reaction was always like, ooh, bigger systems I can fix, bigger systems I can design. Right. And then after a while I realized that, that no, other people have designed big, complicated and good solutions to this. And my job is to learn those systems. And right. that, and then slavishly put out the dots with the systems I just learned so that the business people who don't understand what the hell they're asking for can have pretty charts. Right. and then have a call with the actual actuaries and tell them that how do they not understand that the chart is upside down so right. okay. which was supposed to be so it's like once i understood how it worked the magic has left right and, okay and and this was at the same time when i started getting deeper and deeper into board games yeah. and acronym came out uh dice settlers came out and uh, and uh, people started you know caring about my opinion i wasn't just a, a annoying loudmouth anymore but yeah. an annoying loud mouth that people listen to yeah yeah okay and 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 uh, a good friend of mine dave kirkop he was like let's let, let, let's do a publisher this right. is how my sports uh, started yeah. uh, him and Gordon Kaya are getting together and 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 I had the project Days of Fire on the run at the time, and and essentially he published it. So it was yeah. technically a self-publishing job. It was Dave being the sensible one, me being the I want to get it as the designer wants it, and then we did it. And then yeah. and then we uh, then he brought Patrick Core, and I worked on it, and then the company started getting serious. And I was like, I could do this. It's yeah. this this is an actual job here. Yeah. And then and then and then. As I explained, the big corporate job, it sounded boring. So I was like, okay, maybe I need something more exciting. And I went back to the an e-commerce company that was my first job in the UK many, many years before that I remembered that I loved. Right. I went back. I think they didn't even do a job interview for me because like, oh, remember <laughs> David? And then, of course, on day two, I realized I'm, com I'm completely not qualified for the job they put me in. But... Right. but it was like, 
oh, so I have to learn a new system and I have to do some... Yeah, but it's not, it's not 10 a.m. on Monday. Can I just go home and do some board games now? Right, okay. And and on literally week two of my probation, I went to the boss and said, I love you, man. The way I can cause the least harm to your company is if I quit right now. Right. And that was that obviously I... a, a sign that it, yes. it's time for you to, to yes. shift. Yes. But for Cause... everybody watching who is a budding games designer who thinks, oh, it's it's fine. I'll just <laughs> no. I'll just design a game and then I'll be able to quit my full time job. No. No, I work about twice as much I now than I did when I had a job. Yeah, but also you weren't able to do it because I remember having this this just this discussion with you. You weren't able to do it until you had a few titles under your belt that were getting regular reprints, which were paying well, you. Well, it was an acronym. It was an acronym. Okay. An acronym was both getting regular reprints, which took care about a quarter to a third of my basically yearly salary yep. and second it was getting recognition so that other people were willing to pay me just you know to have me yeah yeah and 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 when when i got the estimated royalty checks for die settlers and kitchen rush and petricor and anachronist second reprint i went hey guys this is enough for me to this quit i just need enough money to pay the mortgage at the end of the month yeah and then my publishers went, how much money do you need? And I went, I need this much. There are three or four of you. Can you guys split? And they right. went, yeah, sure. Okay. And, and and if if enthusiastic person number three designs a good game and then calls up three different publishers all over Europe saying, hi, guys, can you pay me X hundred euros a month? Yeah. They'll say no. Right. Yeah. So this is this is this is my shuffle trick that that can't be taught and can't can't promise anybody can reproduce it yeah it's 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 luck it's uh, insistence and a big loud mouth yeah i mean you know me and you are similar in in that way even though we work in very different parts of the industry is, is people come to me now and they say paul how do you get into the position that you're in you know you're a well-respected rulebook writer and editor and everything else you know i want to do what you do how can i get into it there's no way that random person can just write to a, a publisher and say, hello, you don't know me, nobody's heard of me, but I'd like you to start paying me to write and edit, edit your <laughs> rule books. You just, you just can't do that. Now, what, what people forget about me is that I've been in the industry for, well, I've been in the hobby for like, I've been going to Essen for 20 years. This is the first year I haven't been to Essen since like 1999. Um, I was doing a lot of work with publishers on a voluntary basis because I was a fan and everything else. And then eventually, you know, six years ago, I sort of went, oh, maybe I could do this a little bit more. And I stuck my feet in and now all of a sudden, bang, you know, it, it is where it is. Your feet is stuck. <laughs> well, me, me feet is defi definitely stuck. Right. Uh, more questions in the chat. What, the last game that you backed on Kickstarter. I... Let and then check. properly back, not just back to a dollar to show your yeah, support yeah, yeah. for them. I know I, I I randomly backed Interpid yesterday or the day before because okay. it had some silly early bird. And <laughs> while I despise the early birds, it actually looked interesting. So I was like, let's back it, then okay. figure out whether I want it. And if I don't want it, I'll cancel it. I haven't yet decided. I haven't right. watched any ga gameplay videos. It's well, a he's co-op. doing so a demo I'm of like... it tomorrow. Uh, yes, and, and you're busy. I'm doing, yes, of course. Yeah, you're busy, but Virtual I, GridCon, he's actually doing a demo of it. So if you want to play Intrepid by Jeff Beck, if there are spaces left, pop onto the spreadsheet and have a look. Or, or if he needs any help, he should hire me, and then I can come back. And which is how I tend to shop around these days. That's how I. That's yeah. how I backed Maharaja. That's how I backed Frosthaven. That's how I backed Gorinto. Yeah, a few more. Yeah. So. The, the last game I backed because, uh, well, uh, my, my girlfriend asked me to back Uthia and the Rise of Tribes expansion. Right. And because I played Rise of Tribes with her. But the last game that I looked at Kickstarter and I said I need it, I'm now scrolling back to something like last year. Because okay. I'm, I'm very, because, because I work with these people and I got enough good games from people I know yeah. and work with that I barely need more. And yeah. she, She's a crazy collector, so there is like, uh, like I moved here with two hundred games, and now our collection is above six hundred games. Okay, so, right. <laughs> so it's not like I need more. I backed Oath. 
Ooh, it was the last game I okay. backed out of my own volition. There we go. So. How did you learn to design games? And there are, are there any resources that you'd recommend to people who want to start designing games? Uh, the latter, uh, the second question is, sorry. Uh, right. The first half of the question is, I watched Victor do it on an acrony, mm -hmm. and I failed on the first try on Days of Fire. Right. We finished Days of Fire, we set it down in front of not even very hardcore friends of ours, and we're like, okay, here is enough food for a day, let's play this game 15 times today. Okay. And two of them broke it. Yeah. Like, in a way, it's like, how the hell did I not see that? Right. And and then, then we fixed that. And then we went back to another group and we taught it to them, and they were like, those rules make no sense. <laughs> They're like, okay, so how can we make the game behave exactly like this, but the rules making sense? Yeah. So Days of Fire was literally finished and then scrapped and then redesigned. Right. And and the game that got published is game two. I need to play Days of Fire again. I've been looking at it for the last year thinking, I really want to play this again. So I, I need to at some point. So, so, so the process of how to be not happy with mediocre stuff I learned by failing on Days yeah. of Fire. The process of how to iteratively get something really good, I learned from watching Victor and Richard do it during right. the development of Anachrony. And by the time the Trick Area uh, expansion rolled around, I was able to hold my own against them because don't forget their first game Tricarium was a BGG Top 200 game out yes. of the door yeah. while my first game was redacted, which is unique because of what my co-designer added to it and <laughs> fun because of the theme, but yeah. I don't think I've done anything right there. Right, okay. So, so, <laughs> so you know, I'm not afraid to say that. And and the last thing, the the how, how, how do I learn to be able to tell when I'm doing something actually right was being the developer for Teotihuacan. Right. When I first played Teotihuacan, I hated it. I was right. like, this is boring. It's 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 a math sheet. You're moving that there's nothing in it. And I went, actually, the decisions are smart, the 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 strategies are replayable, it just eh, and change the name of two things, the cost of two things, and I suddenly started loving the game. <laughs> okay. It's like ah so that's that that's the little difference between I don't like it and I like it. Right, okay. Interesting. And, and, and then I went back to three different designs I was working on at the time. I was like, okay, I don't actually like any of these. Can I do the same thing to them that I did to Teotihuacan? Right. And funnily enough, all three of them, the answer was, okay, so that's the bit that's holding the game design down. Let's pull it out. And then the game went... <laughs> and then I was like, okay, bin. Okay. And then I started an entirely new sequence, uh, uh, new cycle of game design. And every single game of that line has been published or will right. be published soon. Nice. So it's it, it was like a let's forget everything I thought I knew. That <laughs> if I go, wouldn't it be cool to do this? It's gonna be bad because right. I'm not a genius inventor. If I go, wouldn't it be cool? I'm not gonna invent the next token. Right. I I I need to find something that works and then add something to it that works and then right. add something to it that works. Right. Okay. And 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 that's how I learned it. And the more. And and me criticizing Europa Universalis made me bet, made me capable of handling something of that magnitude. And today right. I'm working on an epic video game adaptation roughly the size of Europa Universalis, which a year ago I would have called insane. And right. I still am only able to manage it because my co-designer is a madman. But <laughs> excellent. Right, quick like, in. Hey, could from... you research this video game? And a week later he came back. Yeah, I've just played it 70 hours. What do you need? Nice. <laughs> Question in the chat from uh, a friend of ours, Phil Pettifer. What would you have put in a David Turtsy Mage Knight expansion? Time travel, obviously. That's obviously. <laughs> <laughs> There's already time travel. There's temporal yes, portal. But, That's time yes, travel. But I, put, I put it in Tashkalar, so dare me yeah. once. Shame on you. Dare me twice. <laughs> Bigger shame on you. So um, there we go, time travel. Uh, Mohammed <laughs> wants to know, any plans to get into 18xx territory? I'm <clears throat> railways of the world. Sorry, what? I, 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 I start at the bottom, so I, I'm not tipping my feet into 18xx yet, but, okay. but railways of the world, yes. Okay. 
I have something to do with Railways of the World. Right, okay. Uh, Ross wanted to know, how did you get your foot into the door of game designing? Have we kind of answered that one or not? Kind of. There is one cool story I haven't said. Go when on. I moved to the UK, uh, Ludi Creations was running a Kickstarter for a board game holiday. That's yeah. when I first saw a video of Rado. Yeah. So I went, okay, I'm in the UK now. I have money. I'm no longer a poor Hungarian. Let's go on a board gaming holiday. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, then I asked Rado, so how does one become a board game designer? Obviously, with the relentless second intent that there was a prototype in my backpack. Right, okay. And he said, well, I'll talk to that guy pointing at Ludi Creations because yeah. he runs a publisher. And I was lucky enough that Ludi Creations was similarly newbie at the time so yeah. he found prepare for my good talk there you go so yeah right place right time but obviously a, a, a sequence then, of events and then after redacted got published i was invited as the guest star of the hungarian board game designers meetup as the only internationally published game designer <laughs> nice and 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 mihai and i my co-designer with redacted we went around it's like okay so if we want to do a hungarian games edition then who do we want to partner up with right and that's when i met victor and richard yeah cool uh andy grant is in the chat uh he says he watched the first episode of battlestar galactica this morning he see the game has no solo mode and will never have because it's a four to six player game yeah <laughs> yeah so he's saying Moving on. <laughs> how easy or hard would it be to design a solo mode for it and you're saying it would not be possible. No. Like, right. you can make a solo Battlestar Galactica game where you're managing resources and you have to survive X crises using a mechanism somewhat similar and a bit of push your luck, but it mm -hmm. would not be Battlestar Galactica, the board game. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Um, da, 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 da. Right. Yes. There's a question about that. How many board games do you have? We kind of mentioned that. You had 200. You now have 600. Well. Oh. When I moved here, my collection was 200, and yeah. my girlfriend had 400 of her own when I moved in. And since then, the Kickstarter arrivals haven't stopped. Yeah. Uh, Cameron is saying we need to see a Paul and David playthrough of Mage Knight. We have talked I about agree. this. We have talked about this. <laughs> so, yes. At some point, when, when, when I've got time. Um, and also, can we... also a Paul and David and uh, a Vital playthrough of either Vinos or Gallerist. Oh, yeah. That would be cool. Um, Daryl is saying, can we expect another Tash Kalar expansion? Are you allowed yes. to say what's happening with that? Yes. And the answer is? As soon as the app is ready, we'll get back to it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, if, 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 if you're able to say the same sort of things as I'm able to. And this is the same reason why CGE delayed the well, physical the production expansion. of the Through the Ages yep. expansion. Because, it's because in order it, for yeah. Vladia to do the amount of testing that he wanted to do to balance everything, he needed data from thousands of games being played. Yep. So yep. they basically put the expansion design on hold. They did the app. Four and a half years later, the app got released. Then he started coding in. And then two years after that, the expansion came in. And exact he, same plan with Tashkalar. Exactly the same plan with Tashkalar. It was a lot of effort for a relatively little gain. Yeah. Therefore, they want to a gain more of it by having a dlc for the app b they want less effort by instead of having to code the testing base just use the app yeah yeah so this is what's happening cg are working on an app for I, I have indeed designed one more uh, expansion that raja has rejected twice and yes. accepted on the third attempt yeah yeah so yeah, I remember I, I was there. I, I was a fly on the wall brutal. while you were having that meeting. <laughs> it's brutal. I mean, like nothing does uh, a self-confidence reality check than a polite feedback from Raja. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I know nothing. I, I've experienced that as well when I pitched an idea that I had to him and he absolutely tore it to shreds and said, this game is unpublishable. Yep. And I'm like, <laughs> it's like... You know, yeah, but he, he is brutal and that's exactly what I needed to hear because at the end of the day, he's right. And it's I, I just, have, yeah. I have once sent him a pitch for my my wish sequel to Dungeon Pets. He destroyed mm -hmm. it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he does. Um, so the question, in, this is a question in from James about you. What are my top five games that, had da that have David as a, as a designer? Have you even played five of my games? Right, well, let, let's go through them. So Redacted, I've still not played. You're fine. Anachrony, I have played a number of yep. times, and I really like it. 
Yep. What else have I played of yours? Days of Ire, which I need to play more. I, I like it. I like the idea of it, and I need to play it more. Um, Everybody does. I think it, um, um, the Days and Nights, Nights trilogy is the game I wish people knew more about. Yeah, I, I, I do too. Both of them do something that I honestly don't know any other game that does. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, Days of Ire combines Pandemic and Twilight Struggle. And Knights of Fire combines a proper block war game yeah. with a Euro card management puzzle. Yeah, yeah. Which is... I've only played Knights of Fire once, and that was before I was doing the video. But Days of Fire, I have actually played a couple of times since doing the video. It's one I want to do again. So I can't comment on those that much. Uh, Dice Settlers, I think I played once or twice. You were on the blind playtesting team. I was on the blind playtesting team, but since then, I think I played it once afterwards. Have you played the expansion? I like I haven't, it so no. much more of it, the expansion. No, I haven't played the expansion. Uh, it it what moves else it from yours? a light, medium, Euro to heavy dice, well, medium, heavy dice, Euro games. Okay. So. What else of yours have I played? Pat well, Patrick or is technically Dave Kirkops, but I've, yeah. I've, I've hugged it so closely that I feel it's mine by now. So it's probably Anachrony. Anachrony is well, probably my favourite one. Yeah, but that's not the top five. Well, I don't, I, I, the top five would probably be the five that I've played. But yes. yeah, no, Anachrony would probably be... So you, my question to you, do you think I'm going to like Perseverance more than Anachrony? I don't know. I, okay. I, there, are, there are so many things where I think I understand what you like in games, but yeah. then your, then your um, <laughs> old schoolness kicks in. And... I know and and then we suddenly disagree but but like the thematic integration on perseverance is i think is stronger than on anachrony okay. anachrony does the long term long term smooth curve of the game is more focused on anachrony whereas perseverance is more about shit i need to do this now okay. and then the feeling of the dinosaurs are coming so it's a okay. much more immediate game right. than than anachrony anachrony gotcha. has a smooth curve to ride out to the end and yeah. hand holding by the when we started president the first thing i said i don't want faction objectives in the basic game right okay the campaign mode will probably have mini objectives just to guide you through the campaign yeah but the, the core game doesn't have because because in anachrony everybody plays like how do i play progress how do i play uh, dominance and i'm like no play anachrony and then optimize in the middle. So, so perseverance. I wanted more open. Right. So it's okay. it's different in that way. Cool. Quick question. Um... You you should definitely play Venice and possibly Rome and Roll. I think you like Venice. Rome and Roll may or may not be two systems. I'll be honest with you. I've played Rome and Roll a couple of times. It wasn't my favorite. Yeah, I, I understand. Something. What... Yeah, wasn't it's... quite. Didn't fit with me. I, I think I went a bit too smart for its own good, but people who like, like, yeah. like people who want, like people who don't think Lisboa is messy, people who don't think, I'm trying to say something else so that Lisboa is not the only game I rain on, but the uh, who don't, who, who people who like stuff like Trismegistus or, or Lisboa, like anything where mm -hmm. you have to go through a hump to find the gold mine, yeah. will appreciate what I've tried to do on Roman Doll. Right. And I think I succeeded. I like it, but, you know, I mostly design games for myself. Uh, Paul Bryant wants to know, what's your favourite Hungarian musical band? Ooh, that takes me back about 20 years. <laughs> uh, there was a guy called Charlie, and I listened to his songs a lot when I was... Oh, yeah, Charlie, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't idea. pretend that you know it <laughs> no. good old no, charlie I, I haven't listened to any hungarian music for about 20 years now right so. okay um stevie wants to know we and, and before i ask this question apparently there is a right answer here yes which battlestar galactic ba battlestar galactic expansions do you use when you play so skill cards from everything except the pegasus treachery um Mutineer cards from Daybreak, uh, strictly Cobol, or sometimes I can be convinced of Ionian Nebula from uh, Exodus, but prefer not to. Uh, Final Five is okay, but personal goals are not. 
Um, and what else am I forgetting? First execution using Exodus rules, second and onwards execution using Pegasus rules, and also obviously the expansion I designed that unfortunately FFG have never published. Right, there you go. So <laughs> you wanted an answer and hopefully that is the right one. Um, can Vlaja join us for Mage Knight? Vlaja is very, very busy, uh, unfortunately. Um, but people are saying they're very interested in playing Tashkalar with an app. Yeah, I think Tashkalar is one of those games that is going to work better as an app, especially yeah. if CG do the... Uh, the quality bit, they did with the others. Like, well, no, a little bit like Battle Chess, where, where the things are actually animated and come out. Oh, and do yes. Stuff. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. Pop the, the, the knight popping up and riding along. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you think of the fan-generated player aids on BGG for Anachrony? Have fun. Hmm? I don't know. I never looked at them that deeply. Okay. Anachrony is... Base Anachrony is on the lighter end of games I like to play. I don't need a player aid for it. <laughs> right, okay. Um, I think that is probably it. I think I'm caught up with the questions. So it is a few minutes before six o'clock, which is about the time I was going to sort of finish this. So if you have any other questions, let me know. Was there anything that you wanted me to ask you that I haven't asked? I, I, I was hoping you're going to ask me something about episode three and four, just so I can tell you that I can't tell you about that. Okay, well, can you but... tell us about episode three and four of Perseverance? Episode three had its alpha version done before episode one was even designed. But now wow. that we've made one and two much better, well, now that we finished one and two, we're going back to three to make it sure that it's as good as one and two are. Okay. If you're going to ask me anything about episode four, I could answer, but then I'd have to kill you. And that okay. was for anybody watching this video. So that, that's fine. Nobody's watching this. I'll terminate the stream now. Right, the stream's terminated, David. You can tell me in private. <laughs> yeah, but I'd rather not kill you either. <laughs> so just for those people who don't understand about the episodes, episode there are one... There several articles written by Victor and Richard on BGG right. about it, and Balaj I see is already in the, chat, in the chat answering okay. the questions. So I'm not going to take your airtime explaining it. It's four independent games. They're all good, great, epic Mind Clash games by themselves. Half of the game is a very similar mechanism in all of them. Mm -hmm. The other half of the game is a completely different game in all of them. Right. And if you get two of them, you can play a small campaign. If you get four of them, you can play a big campaign. And okay. the first Kickstarter that launches in 7.7 is going to be selling one and two in one big box. Yeah. So you can play episode two as a standalone game. Yes, you can. And or you okay could play if episode somebody, one. If somebody says, I don't like one, but I love two go for it buddy right okay but if you wanted to you could play one and then there would be parts that would transfer over into two yes but there is no surprise rules there is no uh, sea fall effect there yeah. is no uh, no component damage or stickers or new rules revealed so it's it, not it's campaign not legacy yes yes yeah cool uh where do you fit 600 games in your house living room uh, two layers or two layer of uh, IKEA billy shelves. Uh, first layer has uh, wheels on it. Right there, you go. Then um, I think that's everything. Oh, and uh, and and Kalex is in the basement. Right. Oh, you got a basement. Yes. Nice, nice. Anyway, right. So, what are you doing for Virtual Gridcom? What games have you got that you're demoing? I'm gonna go have dinner now, and yep. then after that, I'm gonna be demoing Perseverance Episode One tonight. Yep. Then tomorrow morning at the insane early hour of 9.30, British time, 10.30, <laughs> continental time, I'm going to be dem demoing Defense of Procyon 3, which yeah. is a two versus two asymmetric Euro-like war game uh, with 110 miniatures. And it's it's you thought the route was asymmetric. I'll show you what asymmetric really means. <laughs> um, I, and... I do pity the guy who's going to be doing rules videos for Defense of Procyon 3. I... I... Yeah. Especially since uh, that poor sucker will have to do at least four, possibly five videos. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that's going to be tomorrow at 9.30. And then uh, in the afternoon, I'm actually playing real board games with real people in real life. So I don't want to see any of you wow. at all. And then on Sunday, I'm going to be demoing first Tekkenu, second Tawantin Sue. I don't remember which one goes first. Tekkenu, of course, being the game I co-designed with Daniel Tashini. And it's coming from Board and Dice 
in a month or so, and mm -hmm. you can pre-order it with free worldwide shipping if you click the I here. And <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was a joke. It's making and, more work for me. And Tao and Tinsiu is coming out in this essence-shaped hole in our heart in October. And the, even though it looks like an Italian Euro, it's been designed by me, and it's actually uh, the concept of an acronym's worker placement that is you need a worker and one more thing to go yeah. to a specific place and each worker is good somewhere else that one sentence blown up into a heavy euro right okay so but there's a track on the site to make it look like one of daniel's games right. so okay <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so thank you very much for giving up your time this weekend to do these um do these demos just so it's clear because a lot of people have asked this David is running these demos himself. You will They are not going to be streamed or anything else. And as far as I know, all the places are full. I think Procyon has one more place, but I welcome anybody else to join, hang out in the Discord with me, ask questions. It's not like I can shut up anyways. Yeah, yeah. So those games are happening this weekend. Um, and, and I'll be probably streaming them onto my own personal Facebook wall so that oh, right. every publisher and Facebook group can decide which ones they want to reshare. Because okay. if I just blanket all of them everywhere, then people will hate me. And if I don't stream them, then they can't see. So. Right. So, yeah, the question is, where is the Discord? Oh, That's and is now you. full. Yeah, Proceon so now full. Um, if you job. are watching this and you don't know what virtual GridCon is, please go to gridcon.co.uk. And then you can put slash virtual hyphen gridcon or you'll find it on the gridcon page it is a virtual convention i'm running this weekend it's free to attend you can drop in there's a discord channel somebody could put the chat to the discord channel in the in the in the chat if they want to um and alongside virtual gridcon but as a kind of separate thing i'm running a charity raffle i say it's a separate thing because you can donate to the charity raffle if you're not attending virtual gridcon so they're kind of separate things um, yeah, that charity raffle is running now. We have prizes valued at over three and a half thousand pounds to be won. And we have currently raised, <coughs> excuse me, let me just open up the website right now and tell you how much we have raised so far. Bearing in mind, we had a goal of 500 pounds. Okay, 500 pounds is what we wanted to raise. We have currently raised 6,355 pounds. So, yeah, a massive thank you to everybody who has donated. If you are watching this video and you haven't donated yet, one pound. Please just donate one pound because I've put 70, 80 hours of work into preparing this, none of which was paid for. And I don't want you paying for my time, but I'd like people to just go and donate to the charity. Because when I see that figure that we've raised, that makes me feel a whole lot better about all of the time that I've spent putting all of this together. So yes, thank you very much to everybody for that. Um, it's been, yeah, massively worthwhile so far. But if you can donate, as I say, even if you can just donate a pound, please do so. Uh, and that is everything. So yeah, thank you very much to everybody for joining in the chat. Thank you, David, for this. Always Thank good you. To talk I'm to you. always happy to be here. I, as I said, it's not like I can shut up anyways. Well, <laughs> I, I might as well talk to you. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to roll the end credits now. If you can keep quiet for the 20 seconds while the end credits roll, and then Is we will the have a... doom to doom to doom yeah, music? That's because it. then I can it... sing along. Yeah, you can sing along. <laughs> and then we will have a quick chat about the stuff that we're not allowed to talk about. Right, okay. okay. Um, I'll speak to everybody later on. I will see you on the Discord chat, and I'll talk to you all soon. Cheers, all. Bye-bye. Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.